What's up everyone, welcome back to go-kart build video number 17 and in this video I'm going to do a little bit of an update of where I'm at in terms of the go-kart build and also kind of fill you guys in with what I'm going to be doing in future videos. Now I will inform you that I'm going to be leaving to go out of town for about five days so I won't have any time to work on the go-kart between now and then so I'm trying to get a short little video in before I leave because I told people that I'll be uh, uploading a video um, today so I just kind of want to do a little quick video show you guys um, just some of the stuff that I've done and like I said what I'll be doing in the future and I also kind of want to ask you guys a few questions for your advice um, just to kind of since I have a few days I'm going to be away from it I figured it'd give um, some time for you guys to comment and give your input and feedback because I'd like to hear what you guys have to think as well so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and show you guys what I've been doing Alrighty, so where I left off at the end of the last video was um, I had just mounted, I think I had just mounted the, the seat at the bottom and that was probably the most difficult part of mounting the seat and now the seat is completely mounted. It is super sturdy, it does not move at all. So I'm going to go ahead and show a little bit more of what I did to do um, to mount the seat. And so to start, I'll just show, so there's the two bottom bolts. Uh, you can see there, those were the first um, holes that I drilled through the seat because that was kind of like the preliminary spot to get it mounted. And then what I did next was I mounted these back struts. And these will kind of provide the, the support, you know, if, I'm have, if I lean back or at all or anything like that. And so um, I... Yeah, I did this side first. Anyways, it doesn't matter. But so what I did was on this side, I drilled through. I kind of picked like an approximate spot of where I wanted the the bolt to come through. I tried to pick like a flat spot in the seat so the strut could sit um, flush against the seat as much as possible. And then so I drilled through there, mounted the strut, and then um, lined it up with this uh, this beam here, uh, this vertical beam, and then drilled a hole through that. So then. I had one done, and then uh, the next step was, so I figured um, after drilling through this that it was three inches up from the bottom. That's not in focus, but uh, anyways, uh, I was three inches up from the bottom, and so what I did on this side was I measured three inches up from the bottom, drilled a hole, put the bracket or the strut on, and then uh, lined it up to kind of uh, get an approximate equal um, distance of where I um, mounted the other one. So instead of trying to just kind of eyeball it, I had a more of a reference to go off of. So I don't think they're perfectly like even, but they're pretty close. Uh, so that that was um, the next part I did after doing the bottom. And then what I, I had one more strut left over, and as you can see it's mounted right there, but I was debating whether or not to do it in the back here and mount it, ooh that light is hot, and mount it to the back of the seat and mount it here, but after trying to do it and, um, and uh, kind of get it lined up, it was going to be really hard to drill through that tubing there, um, the way the, the frame is set up. So what I did was I mounted it to the front and I'm really glad I did this instead um, because it'll kind of provide some support if like you know I brake really hard and all the weight kind of shifts forward. Um, so I have this one front support here to help brace that force um, if I brake really hard or something like that. Um, so it, this uh, just a smaller strut and what I did was um, I had to really bend this one to get it to uh, go with the flush with the bottom of the seat and so what I did was I just put it in my vise and then basically just I just pushed it myself because they're not I think they're just aluminum or maybe some uh, alloy metal um, but I just you know took them in the vise put them in the vise and then uh, went like that and they bent pretty well and I was able to uh, mount them so I sat in it, it feels really good, it feels really comfy, I'm really happy with the, the, um, how, like the seating position and like the tilt, and so, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the seat. 
So I wanted to get the seat mounted first so I could sit in it and then get an idea of where I want the steering wheel to be and where I should uh, build the steering column. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the camera on the tripod and I'm going to sit in the go-kart and I'll kind of show you guys like where my ideal uh, position is that I want for the steering wheel and then I'll kind of talking uh, and then I'll kind of talk about a little bit about how I'm going to uh, build the steering column and some of the challenges that I that I'll face with uh, doing that. Okay, so I'm going to plop down into the seat. Now, after I sat in it for the first time with, when it was all completely mounted, because I didn't want to sit in it just with the two bottom bolts because I felt like I would rip the uh, bolts out of the seat because um, it's just fiberglass really, but um, after, upon sitting in it for the first time, I was really happy with how the, like I said, how the tilt was um, because I've seen some go-karts where the seat is literally just flat against the frame and it seems like the drivers are like almost gonna like fall forward out of the seat. I don't know, that's just kind of how it looked. It just looked kind of awkward, like an awkward seating position. At least with this, you're kind of just kind of like chilling back and leaning back a little bit. And you know, you're less, I feel like you're less likely to kind of like, you know, like go f like forward out of the seat if you brake heavily or hit something or whatever, even though I don't plan on doing that. Anything can happen. Um, but basically where I got this reference was I just looked at a bunch of shifter cart pictures online and noticed that a lot of them, you know, the seat was really tilted back. And I think that's just because, you know, the, well, the way the racing is with the shifter carts. And I'm pretty sure that most of them don't even have seat belts. So the tilt like that is probably to like prevent people from flying forward or flying out and just kind of keep them uh, in the seat and like far back in the seat. So. That's where I was kind of going with that. Um, so those these struts back here will, you know, support the weight when I'm leaning back, and then the strut in the front will support, you know, any weight uh, if I'm braking or if I'm getting in and out of the seat. Um, but yeah, that's that, I was pretty pleased with that. Now onto the steering wheel position. Um, so I got the steering wheel here, and I think where I kind of want the steering wheel is right about here. Um, it's pretty close. It's enough room for me to kind of move my elbows um, but I like being able to rest my elbows kind of against the side of the seat here and, and my thighs um, so I think right about here is my ideal uh, steering wheel position and if my face is blown out from this light I apologize but it's really dark in the garage so I kind of had to do my best here because it's nighttime um, but yeah so this this steering wheel position is probably where I'm going to go with that the only downside of putting it right here is it might make it really difficult to get in and out with the steering wheel um, attached. So just like a race car, you know, they have detachable steering wheels. I might have to do some sort of detachable, uh, like, I don't know, maybe a quick release with the steering wheel hub, like just a, two bolts to take it off of the steering wheel column. So something like that maybe. Um, but I didn't want to have it like out here, or like here. So even though it would make it easier to get in and out, it would just be like a really awkward steering wheel position. So I think right here is where I'm gonna go with that. And um, I think that's pretty much it with the seat and the steering wheel position. I think I'm gonna go ahead and talk about next, like how I'm gonna go about building the steering column. And this is where um, I think I'm gonna ask for a little bit of your guys' advice to see what you guys think about how, how I'm gonna approach uh, building this. One last thing I want to mention um, before I move on to talking about the steering column is that uh, after I had the seat mounted, I got some rubber grommets from Home Depot and I just mounted them in between the strut and the seat because um, this seat is fiberglass and I'd rather have not have metal on fiberglass because I feel like the metal would uh, start eating away at the fiberglass, you know, with vibrations and um, impacts and stuff, especially on the bottom. I put two grommets with those bottom bolts anywhere where the metal touches the fiberglass. So on the bottom and where the streets three three struts meet, there is a rubber grommet. And but I didn't have enough room for the front one, so I think I'm just going to get like a nylon washer because it's really thin because the rubber grommets are a little bit thicker. Um, but yeah, so that'll help with vibration. It will help with. Uh, any rattling and it'll definitely help uh, keep the seat in good shape and won't tear the fiberglass apart. Alrighty, so what I'm going to be doing here with this uh, steering column is uh, because I'm 
designing this go-kart to fit in the back of my car with the seats folded down, it has to kind of you know be collapsible. It has to have a collapsible design. And the only downside with the seat is I'm gonna have to remove the seat whenever I put it in the car. So that's kind of a nuisance, but you know, hey, I'm fitting a pretty decently sized go-kart in my uh, Nissan Altima. So, uh, but anyways, so with the steering column, it's definitely gonna have to be collapsible because um, the trunk is only so big and there's like a kind of a space where the trunk gets narrower and the steering wheel column will definitely not fit uh, if it's just uh, hard mounted. So what I'm gonna do is this is one and a quarter inch pipe and this is the pipe I use to make the uh, shock tab mounts. And this is the one inch pipe, which is what the entire frame is built out of. And I, because the pipe has some uh, metal left over from being cut, it doesn't fit now, but this pipe fits inside the other pipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this, the bigger one and a quarter inch pipe, uh, actually welded to the frame. And I think I'm gonna have to do some sort of plate at the bottom here because the one and a quarter inch pipe is bigger than this one inch pipe on the frame so it's going to overhang so that's where I was kind of wondering like do you guys think I should just get like a metal plate weld the plate and then weld this to the plate or I should just try and weld this directly to the frame even though it overhangs a little bit um, so that was kind of one question there um, but what I'm thinking of doing with this next is I'm going to cut like maybe a two two and a half inch section of this That'll be welded, and then um, this this other pit pipe here is gonna slide in, and then I'm gonna drill holes all the way through, one going this way and the other going that way, and they're gonna kind of be locking bolts, so it'll kind of lock the this uh, pipe in. And this pipe will, you know, it'll be as tall as how I want the steering wheel column to be. And then once I do that, I'm gonna kind of get an approximate uh, height for how tall I want it based on sitting in the seat and then I'll cut it and then what I have to do is um, get uh, or maybe cut it at a diagonal at the top here and based on the uh, angle that I want and then I'm just gonna have to weld I bought some uh, 3 quarter inch outside diameter pipe so that's gonna fit for the steering wheel hub and the u-joint I bought for the steering column and then I just have to get some other pipe that's three quarter inch uh, diameter on the inside so it can be like a, a sleeve for that and that's what the steering wheel column will go inside to kind of um, rotate inside um, when you turn it. And then I just have to build another mount at the bottom closer to here and then the U-joint will be right here and then that way when I unbolt this section uh, it'll allow the, the steering wheel column to you know, collapse down. That's what the U-joint is for. So I think that's pretty much it with the steering wheel column. Uh, that's the next big part of the build. And then once I do that, I will move on to mounting the pedals. And I'll just move the camera a little bit. And so what I'm planning on doing with the pedals is I'm going to probably maybe do uh, two more like diagonal pieces to kind of go with the the frame design, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, depending on uh, spacing after having the, the steering wheel column mounted, but I'm going to get a plate, a uh, steel plate, and I'm going to drill holes and bolt the plate here, and it's going to mount probably to about there, and then the pedals will just be, um, there'll be a sleeve for the pedals to slide into, and that sleeve will be welded to the plate, and that way, like, you know, because there's the plate, you know, your feet aren't going to fall through the frame here so it's kind of like a resting position for your heels and stuff like that and I think that's it you know once I get the pedals mounted I can uh, get the engine mounted and then uh, hook up all the throttle cables and brake cables and you know that's pretty close to being a, a, a working go-kart all right, so I think that's just gonna kind of do it for this little update video. I hope I showed you guys enough of where I'm at with the go-kart and kind of my plans for the next uh, part of the build. And uh, if, like I said, if you guys have any advice for what to do with the steering wheel column or even the pedals or anything else, just uh, feel free to comment below and I'll definitely uh, take those into consideration when um, looking at how to design the different parts for the go-kart. Um, but 
I think that's pretty much it. I have to get packing and edit this video and upload it for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that up here. Um, so I wanted to just thank you all for watching very much. If you aren't already, subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be some great videos coming with the go-kart build and you know I'm gonna do a lot more stuff with my car once I finish the go-kart build. So a lot of cool videos to come. Like I said, subscribe if you aren't already. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. So uh, thank you all for watching again and I hope you have a good one.